Hello students. Today the focus of our video lecture is link state routing that is LSR and the algorithm related to LSR which is Dijkstra's algorithm. From my previous video lectures you are already aware by now that link state routing is a method of routing which is intra-domain routing. Intra-domain means within AS or inside autonomous system or inside AS and the algorithm that is used is the Dijkstra's algorithm. Let's proceed. Now let's understand first what is the meaning of link state routing. Now in link state routing each router shares its knowledge about its neighborhood with every router in that particular area. Now in order to do this it will always prepare what is known as link state packet or what we popularly know it as LSP and it is sent to each and every router. Now link state routing if you compare it with DVR that is distance vector routing. Distance vector routing will share the knowledge about the entire AS only to its immediate neighbor whereas this LSR that is link state routing will share its knowledge about its neighborhood with every router in that area. So it is not only its immediate neighbors but all the routers in that area will be made aware of the knowledge which each router is having. So eventually each and every router on the network is aware of the scenario which is present on the particular network. So DVR is one type of routing and link state routing is another type of routing. So you got to understand this thin line of difference between distance vector routing and link state routing. Alright. Now how the link state routing works. So you got to understand the link state routing based on these three points. As I mentioned sharing the knowledge about the neighborhood to each and every router in the area is done at the first instant and how this is done this is done by a process which is called as a flooding we'll look into it in detail in my upcoming slides in this video and when the sharing is done sharing will be done when there is a change whenever there is a change or whenever there is a new information which is present with one router the router will share that information to all the routers in that particular network through the process which is known as flooding and what it uses is the LSP that is link state packets. Okay, now link state routing will be using the algorithm to find to build a routing table and to find the shortest path and the algorithm is called as Dijkstra's algorithm. Very very important algorithm as far as problems are concerned as far as concepts are concerned. Okay. Now what is the link state knowledge? Link state knowledge is nothing but it is related to the condition, the cost of the link and the whole topology can be compiled from the partial knowledge of each of the node. So you can see that there is a knowledge which is there with one of the uh, node and another type of knowledge with another type of node. So entire knowledge is shared with all the routers which are present on the network and it's not only the neighbors who with whom the knowledge is shared but it is shared with all the routers or all the nodes of the network. Now links let's understand LSR a bit in detail. The first step is to create what is known as link state packet or LSP. Now creation of the states of the links by each node. So the state is created via what is known as LSP link state packet. What LSP is having? LSP will have the state of the link. It will have the cost of the link. All this information is present in LSP. Second important point is dissemination of this LSP to every other router through a process as I mentioned called as flooding in a very efficient and reliable way. 
so this lsp is flooded to entire network please mind you uh, um, in opposition to your uh, dvr where only neighborhoods are informed here not only the neighbors but the entire network is informed via lsp through a process called as flooding then we have the third and very important step which is formation of the shortest path tree so here the shortest path tree is formed with the help of algorithm which is called dijkstra's algorithm we are going to solve very important problems on dijkstra's algorithm which are important from exam point of view i will be doing it in my next video and also the calculation of the routing table based on the shortest path tree once you get the shortest path with the help of dijkstra's algorithm the routing table is modified based on this particular uh, based on this particular shortest path now creation of lsp got to be talked about a bit in detail lsp contains as i said the node identity the list of links the sequence number and always the new lsps are replaced uh, sorry the old lsps are being uh, replaced by new lsps now when the new lsps comes when there is a change or any other new information appears on the network so lsps are generated when there is a change in the topology of the domain or if there is no change on periodic basis maybe normally after 60 minutes or 2 hours the lsps are generated and they are flooded on the entire network so under two scenarios lsp would be created and flooded when there is a change and secondly maybe after a periodic gap of 60 minutes or 2 hours all right now link state routing may as i said flooding of lsp is very very important so flooding may it discards as i said the old lsp and keeps the new one it sends a copy of it out of each interface except the except one from where the packet has arrived okay now formation of the shortest path tree is a very very important step in the case of lsr and as i mentioned it is done with the help of dijkstra's algorithm now Uh, when this dijkstra's algorithm is applied it is more or less the third step of L <coughs> lsr after receiving all the lsps that means once the flooding is taken place each node will have a copy of the whole topology and it has to find the shortest path and dijkstra's algorithm is a very very efficient and very good way to find what is known as shortest path now dijkstra's algorithm uh, in the form of flow chart looks something like this i have to set the route to local node and move it to tentative list that means i have to first finalize one source node or source vertex or the root vertex then i have to check whether the tentative list is empty if it is yes i have to stop if it is no then among the nodes in the list i have to move to the node which is having the shortest path all right so the shortest path is very very important over here then after that i have to add this to my permanent list what i need to add the shortest path i need to add to my list okay then i have to add each unprocessed neighbor of the last moved node to the tentative list if not already there so here also whenever i am adding any new uh, tent Uh, any new node to my list i have to see that the uh, uh, the cost has to be always calculated if the cost of the new added uh, uh, what do you call node is higher i have to replace it with a new one which is having a lower cost so the scenario or the main point over here is to find out the uh, uh, find out the link or the node with the shortest or the smallest distance so i have to keep on uh, i have to keep on repeating uh, this till uh, my tentative list becomes empty all right so this is the uh, actual uh, flow chart of dijkstra's algorithm 
this particular thing will be very very clear once we are going to solve some of the problems all right so this is the uh, theory behind your dijkstra's algorithm i'm not going into detail of this example because this example and rather a similar type will be solved actually uh, in one of the uh, videos which i will be uploading all right so uh, just a small uh, recapitulation of whatever is done we have studied second type of intra domain routing which is your lsr that is link state routing lsr makes use of dijkstra's algorithm dijkstra's algorithm is used to find the shortest path now key points in lsr that is link state routing is that i have to first prepare your lsp that is link state packet secondly i have to flood this lsps on the entire network so that all the routers get the information about what changes have happened in my network thirdly i have to apply dijkstra's algorithm to find the shortest path tree based and the fourth point based on your shortest path tree i have to modify the i in the sense the routers have to modify its individual routing tables so that the packet which is routed or forwarded reaches its destination with by taking the shortest and the best possible path all right i hope both these concepts of lsr and dijkstra's algorithm is clear to all of you thank you so much students take care